Hello everyone and uh, peace of Christ to all of you. I hope my voice is coming good and clear. Please inform me if you have any difficulty from your side. Today our topic is about actually uh, one of the Muslims made a comment and the comment was very simple. This Muslim said the only true God is the God of Abraham. And I find it very funny that the only true God is the God of Abraham, but which Abraham? Abraham in Islam, which Allah who did not know his name, or the God of Islam, which, uh, let us see. So we do not know really which God they are talking about, and we have no idea what is this God present. Always, when we speak to somebody about God, we need to remember, I'm not sure if my broadcast is coming good. Let me see. Um. Is the quality is good, guys? I want to be sure that everything is working fine. Let me see. All right. Because look like we have <coughs> too much bandwidth is used. All right. Yeah, so when the Muslims speak that they believe in the God of Abraham, which Abraham? Abraham, the one who saw the sun and he worshipped it and he called it Akbar. Abraham, the one who worshipped the stars. Which Abraham we are talking about? We need to ask ourselves. So always we, you know, we find Muslims trying to confuse us by claiming that they have the same God as the God of Abraham. But in fact, if you have the same God of Abraham, then you should do what Abraham does. And this is exactly what Jesus says to the Jews, even the Jews, who they are Jews. Jesus says to them, if you are the children of Abraham, you do what Abraham does. So claiming to be worshipping the God of Abraham is not enough to prove to us that really you follow the God of Abraham. First of all, the God of Abraham, his name is not Allah. In front of us, we have a Muslim website. And you see here it says a chat. I don't want to go in the chat because if I go in the chat, we will die laughing. The second you start asking Muslims questions about Islam, they will, they go in chaos. The only questions you're allowed as long as it is silly and stupid. Now, if we go in this website and try to understand how the Muslims present Allah to us, Allah, the, the one and the only true God in Islam. I like it that you added the end in Islam. In Islam. Which means not the God of everybody. That is a God in Islam. Now, how you can find out that Allah is the only God and he is the true God? Any Muslim can tell us? Who is a Muslim is willing to tell us how Allah is a qualified to be God and the only true God? What is the proof? Any Muslim in the comment section want to say something to us? I am a Christian and I want to know that Allah, is he the true God or not? How we can find out? Let us go down to see in the rest of the article. I don't know how much the article is clear for you guys, uh, but I will try to make it. Uh, let us see if I can resize this page. I'm not sure in this tablet how you can do that. Look like it's hard to do it. Anyway, if we zoom in, so let us zoom in, maybe that will help. So you guys can read it from your side. Look around. It is really irrational to believe that the world design with such flaws. Yeah, and we, you know, we are believers. We do not need somebody to school us about the God is exist or not. But how we can sure be sure that Allah is the God we are talking about? Allah said, there's no deity except him. I can say that too. 
I can claim right now that I'm deity and I claim that there's no one but me. That is very silly proof to say that somebody say that he is the only deity. Do you have a proof until now zero? Let us go. Who is Allah? This question best is best answered by creator himself again. Nobody witnessing to Allah except someone his name is Allah and who is the one who spoke to Allah? Nobody According to Muslims Muhammad himself he never spoke to Allah. There's a guy his name is Jibreel He came in the image of a man. He is a boyfriend of Muhammad His name is Dahi al-Kalbi and we can show you the reference from the hadith That Jibreel is an angel supposedly but he come in the look of a man who is a friend or boyfriend of Muhammad and he was a very handsome man, so Jibreel, he cloned him. Here, now we have two Jibreel, because we have the original guy, his name is Dahya, and we have Jibreel, two of them, they look the same. So who is the witness that the one who says this in the front of us is Allah? Or if Allah is exist? No witnesses. Muhammad himself, he never saw Allah, he never spoke to Allah, he never heard the voice of Allah. So what Muhammad heard? According to Muslims, there's a guy, he came to him, and the Muslim claimed that he is Jibreel. This is exactly as we heard about Joseph Smith, who is claiming to be a prophet for the Mormon. There's two angels, they came to him, one of them is Jibreel. And they gave him a book, and he translated the book from the Egyptian language to English. <laughs> but there's no witnesses. Guess what? Yesterday, two angels, they came to me. One of them, he offered me baklava, and the other one, he offered me ice cream. And they said to me, which one you prefer? I said, the black coffee. I mean, anyone can say anything. Anyone can claim anything. This is until now, you gave me nothing. You are trying to present to me God, or what you are saying to me, that Allah says this about himself. But who is Allah? You do not know. We continue. Background in history. Chapter 112 in the Quran was revealed in the early days of Islam. Hold on. Why chapter 112 in the Quran is revealed in the early Islam, but yet it is a chapter 112? To make it simple, if this is from the beginning of Islam, then we should have this is in the beginning of the Quran. And the Quran is 114 chapters. So how the first chapters became the end or the last chapters? The answer is very easy. Muslims, they corrupt their own book too, which means the corrupt is corrupted twice. This is why I don't talk about the corruption of the Quran because what the point to prove the corrupt to be corrupt? Muhammad himself is a corrupt man and there's no point to prove that the corrupt book is corrupted. But as you see, this is from the early Islam, but yet it's chapter number 112 when the Quran is, is 114 chapter. So, what the early Islam chapter became the end Islam chapter or the last chapters This is this is how you prove that Islam is a false cult Then was revealed in the early days of Islam at the time when the world was whole polyistic In belief that's false that's stupid because the Christian the Jews they believe in one God and actually there's many beliefs or let's say Many religions believe in one God So this is a false statement when somebody come to you with a statement we have to examine it otherwise talk is cheap and this is what we see in front of our eyes nothing but a cheap talk for pagan arab worship was due to idols the funny the funny thing about muslims they say that the arab were pagan but muhammad he worship as the pagan worship and they will not tell you that the pagan they worship allah too if we go in the quran And we type the word mushrikeen. The only, actually, the only thing in the Quran, there's two kinds of uh, of belief in Islam. Mushrik and believer. That's it. Who is a mushrik? What does the word mushrik mean? It is someone associate others with God, which is Allah. So all the believers and the Arab, both of them believe in Allah and Islam. Let us prove it. This is the Quran. 
you will see that all of those, the word mushrik, all of it appear as uh, somebody worship Allah and beside Allah an intercessor, which means they worship Allah at the end of the day, but they worship an intercessor and that is the idol. So Muslims and pagans are the same. Both of them, they worship the same God. His name is Allah. And all the idols around the Kaaba were nothing except tiny gods beside Allah and Akbar. Akbar was God. Allah is God. Muhammad, he merged them together and he made them Allah and Akbar. This is why in Arabic they don't say Allah Akbar. They say Allahu Akbar. Who in Arabic wa mean and Akbar. So here, even Muhammad, he claimed that the Christians are mushrikeen. Well, hold on. Why is that? Let us see what the word mushrikeen mean. Chapter 2, verse number 64. Or chapter 3, sorry. Say, O oh, people of the scriptures, and look here how funny the Muhammad, the author of the Quran, he claimed that the Christians are false. Yet he called them people of the scriptures. Have you ever heard of a smart Abdul more than Muhammad? To make it simple for you, if the Christian corrupted their scriptures, how you how you call them the people of the scriptures? Do, do you understand what I'm saying? It's like saying to somebody, somebody he lost his hair, the guy with the hair. <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying, guys? So the Quran, when you read it, even a simple sentence proved to us that the one who wrote the Quran, he have a low IQ. Because either the Christians are not people of the scriptures because they are lost, or they deserve to be called people of the scriptures when you call somebody people of the scriptures that means they are keeping the scriptures do we understand anyone don't understand what i'm saying like imagine you you used to have a car and then i took the car from you and then now you i call you the guy with the car how silly So how you call the Christians people of the scriptures if they have no scriptures? If the Muslim enter now, they say the Bible is corrupt and we cannot find the original. So how is stupid of you to say that they are the people of the scriptures? So where is the scriptures? Silly, stupid cult. The author who made this book is a, I don't want to use the word start with do and o and n and key, but it is like this. I mean, even if you give it to a chicken to make a book, it will, will come with something better. Rooster would do better. So what we see in the front of us, we see something silly and something stupid. And then Muhammad, he said to them, come to an agreement between us and you. What agreement? What agreement? That we shall worship none but Allah. Okay, hold on. The Muslim, they say that the Christians, they have a false belief. Hmm. Muhammad, he called the Christians people of the scriptures, which means their belief is true. And whatever written in their scriptures is true. Then you say to them, let us worship only Allah. That is not and does not make sense because the scripture is against worshiping someone his name is Allah and then he says we shall take no partner and that is mushrik so mushrik in Islam is not someone worship idols as Muslim they claim mushrik is someone worship Allah and he take intercessor for him and that can be anyone including idol or even Jesus. So it's very silly to say the Arab they were pagan when the fact Muhammad himself was a pagan and the Kaaba was built by the pagan Arab. And there was a 26 Kaaba around the Arabian Peninsula, not only one in Mecca. The Kaaba was just a business place where Muhammad, he himself, he practiced business 
and he himself uh, uh, forsake the Kaaba. I mean, if you ask the Muslims, okay, after Muhammad, he became a prophet, how many times he did Hajj? Anyone knows in the text? How many times Muhammad, he, he did Hajj? Once. Once. Well, why? What, what, what he was doing after he became a prophet? He was praying toward Jerusalem because he was trying to convince the Christian and the Jews that he is not a pagan Arab. He worshiped the same God of Abraham. But when those Arab and the Jews and the Christians, they refuse him. And then Muhammad, he overcome the Arab, his tribe in Mecca. So he changed the direction of the Kaaba prayer for the purpose of money. And actually, we can show you that from the Quran. If we go in the Quran, when Muhammad, he conquered the Kaaba. He come in chapter 9, verse 20, 28. And by the way, this is a chapter, many Muslims agree that this is the last chapter Muhammad ever gave before he died. So Muhammad, he said in this chapter that idolater, by the way, it doesn't say idolater. This is a false translation. He says mushrikeen. Mushrikeen is not idolaters. Mushrikeen is people who associate God or idols or any person with Allah. So as you see, Muslims and pagans, they associate, they, they worship the same God. All of them, they worship one God. His name is Allah. All of them, they associate Allah with something else. So look what happened. The Arab before Muhammad, they used to associate idols with Allah. The Arab after Islam, they associate Muhammad with Allah. So the Muslim now, they have Shahada. What the Shahada says? It contained the name of Muhammad beside the name of Allah. That is shirk. Because why you associate the name of a man with the name of a God? Who is, who is Muhammad? No one. No, in Islam, he is, he is more important than Allah. And I will show you that. So let us go what the purpose of Muhammad changing after all the years he claimed to be a prophet. He never did Hajj except once. When? When he decided that this is, will be a place to worship as Umar al-Khattab, he advised him. If we go in the hadith, you will see Umar al-Khattab, he says, that his Lord agree with him in three things. And by the way, Muslims, they, they, have, they have many reference. Some, it says that even Allah, he took 10 things from Umar. Look what, it, what is, I wish to took the station of Abraham. So who is the one who did that? Umar, he said to Allah Messenger, I wish we take the station of Abraham as our prior place, which means all the years Muhammad claiming to be prophet never mentioned the Kaaba as a station of a prayer. Never, never. It was a wish of Umar. And then the wish of Umar came as a verse in the Quran. Isn't it weird? The Muslim, they say that Allah, Quran, nobody can make like it. But as you see here, you will see that Allah, Quran is copied from Umar. And the verse, so this verse, this came the same as I has said, was revealed. Exactly the same. Umar, he says something. Muhammad, he put it in the Quran. Exactly. That is a clear proof that Muhammad is a scam. He's a fraud. He was copying a statement from Umar because he liked it. Now, if we go back to the Quran, we will find this. So after Muhammad, he says that the mushrikeen, the one who associate Allah with, uh, uh, with idols, they are any clean. So don't allow them. No go zone. Islam is a racist cult. Does not does not tolerance anyone to exist beside Islam. So okay, we hijacked this building, which was always for everybody, and now we hijack it and we kick anyone we don't like. And then in the same verse, what he says, "Oh, you believe? Uh, don't let the mushrikeen, the one who associate with Allah, because they are unclean, very, very, very disgusting claim. So let them not to come near it." 
to the place of worship, the Kaaba, after this year. And if you fear a poverty, do you see it? If you fear a poverty, Allah will give you something instead from lose of their merchandise. So the Kaaba always before Islam and after Islam was a mall, a, a market, a bazaar, a place where they sell panties and divers. That is the Kaaba. So now if you if you if you fear that you will lose business and merchandise, Allah will give you something better. What is that? Fight against the Christian and the Jews so you can take their money. Do you see it? So Muhammad he created this verse to attack the Christians because now he uh, he did not allow people to go to Mecca unless they are Muslims. So attacking the Christians was not to spread Islam. Attacking the Christian was for the purpose. If you fear the poverty, go and attack the Christians and force them to pay you money. Do you see it? And actually, maybe many of you, many one of you do not know that the the mafia, the mafia practice of taking money for protection is something that Italian in Sicily and other places they learned from the Muslims when the Muslims withdraw from Europe the European the gang the criminals they learn from the Muslims that okay you want to be protected you pay us and that is Islam Islam is nothing but a gang so Muhammad he created this verse in order to protect the Muslims from fearing pro poverty they need a source of money, income, and that income is the Christian and the Jewish cow. So we let them live, but they have to work and give us money. So Muslims, they do nothing. What is what is the job of a Muslim during the time of Muhammad? What, what they do for a living? Nothing except attacking, stealing. If we go, actually, Muhammad even, he cursed the one who have farming tools. If we go here, Let us see. <clears throat> I will try to find you. Here we go. Uh, not this one. Hold on. There is a hadith for Muhammad. He said that. Uh, if any of you have a, have a farming tools, Allah will not bless him. Here we go. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. And this is Sahih. I saw, I saw some agriculture equipment and said, I heard the prophet saying, there is no house which these equipment enters except that Allah will cause humiliation to enter it. So who was feeding the Muslims? Do you understand, people? Who was feeding the Muslims? Nobody. Who is Ilah in Ezra? 5-1. And Daniel, you see, uh, people Muslim, you are just a, you are just an idiot, because the word ilah is not a name of a god. You are a donkey, and Allah is not ilah. Let me explain to you. Uh, I don't have here a tool to to write in the screen, so but but let us say, ilah is e l and lah. Ilah. Hmm? So this is an old Aramaic word, ilah. By time, it's used by other belief, but in Islam, Lah is the moon god, and we can prove it easy. Even you Muslims, you use the sign of the moon, and you fast by the moon, and you do everything by the moon. And Muhammad, when he see the moon, he bow down. And I can show you the reference right now. So Ilah have nothing to do with Allah because it is two word. The word which fit with you is Lah. Il is a word meaning God. Al is a word meaning God. The name of the God is Lah. So all languages, Aramaic and Hebrew, 
they are taking from sorry the, the uh, Hebrew and Arabic they are taking taking their language and their words from the Aramaic the difference between the Hebrew and the Arabic that's you Muslims when you use Allah you take it as a name for God so when the Hebrew they use the word Ilah it's just a word mean God so they took that from the Aramaic but you yourself you took the word as name if we go actually to the article the one we are reading from you will see that even they describe that Allah is the name of the God of Islam is not the word mean God and that they use different so if I use the word Ilah as a word mean God okay it's a word mean God in my language today but if I say that Allah is a name not a word mean God that's mean you took the name which mean you copy the name of the Aramaic which is the moon God so here we see and I'm just uh, uh, let me let me put the comment of uh, this Abdul in the screen. Um, I don't know how to find his comment now. Let us go. Maybe he can post it again so we can laugh together. It's hard to find it now in the text. I'm using the other browser, which is you can, uh, you know, like pen. Here we go. All right, the Arabian prophet, another lie, Ilah Hebrew is one word. Thank you very much. In the Hebrew, it's one word. In Islam, is not. And we can prove it to you. Al is a word mean God. Ilah is a word mean God for the Hebrew. But originally, that word does not just mean God. It was taken from the Aramaic. So the Hebrew, they took their language, or let us say their language is born out of Aramaic, as many other languages. The same as the Arabic. The, the difference between the Hebrew and the Arabic, Arabic is a mix of shish kebab, potato, tomato, uh, uh, hummus. And then we put them together, we have Arabic, which means there's no language called Arabic. Arabic is not a language by itself. So the Muslims, they decide to, to copy the name of the God of the pagan Aramaic, which is Allah, which is the ancient name. As an example, in the old language of Israel, Israel was not Israel. It was Israel. What does that mean? Il was Al. Mikael. Jibra'al. All those names used to end by Al. What Al mean? God. The new Hebrew replaced the word Al by el so ilah it is the same as allah but for you you took it as a name from the pagan aramaic for the hebrew they use it as a word meaning god so the development of the language differently happened between the arabic and between the hebrew the hebrew they took it as a word meaning god for you it's a name of god and if you ask any muslim is the word allah is a name or a word meaning god they will agree, all of them, that it is not a word mean God. It means God at the end of the day, yes, but it is the name of the unique God of Islam. So when a Muslim, he try, he try his best, but at the end, he got himself busted. So now let us go and see and see more, more stories so we can love together. If we go back here, for the pagan Arab worship was due to idols made of stones. Well, here we go. Here we go. Don't you Muslims worship a stone and kiss a stone? It's a black stone. Let us go to the hadith. And by the way, here I don't want to forget to mention that when we mention that Muhammad is cursing and saying that the one who will have equipment for farming, that's mean any Muslim today. He have equipment for farming or he do farming he is not a muslim take a note and imagine if the whole world convert to islam who is going to feed us because equipment of farming is haram because muhammad he don't want them to be peaceful people live in their houses doing farming he want warriors gang and killers you know what i mean this is the only purpose the purpose is don't have those because if you have these, that's mean you will settle down. You will do farming 
and he will not be a warrior who go and do like the Viking. He want Viking. He want blood suckers. Otherwise, I challenge anyone to tell me, and I challenge this Abdul in the text and any Abdul, what is the purpose of Allah or what the reason Allah will humiliate you if you have agriculture tools? Is that idols? What? What is the reason? Nothing except that this man, he want to build a state of a criminals based on sucking the blood of other nations. Attacking them, stealing their money, stealing their women, stealing their children, take them into slavery. This is why slavery business grow in Islam. Actually, all the slaves in America and Europe was sold by Muslims to the white man. All of them from North Africa. The North African Muslims, they used to go capture deep inside Africa, black people and sell them to the white man in Europe and in America. If you don't believe me, you can do a little search and you can find all the answers. Now we go back here. We spoke about worshiping idols. Muslims now, they kiss a black stone. And if you ask any Muslim why you kiss the black stone, they say because the prophet kissed it. Actually, I showed you an example just a few uh, days ago, how we, uh, we chatted with Muslim website. It's called Ask a Muslim. Ask a Muslim. We asked the guy, why, do you, why the prophet kissed the black stone? He said, because it's holy. Why he can, why it's holy? Because he can say, didn't know. Didn't know. So now you are claiming that they are pagan, but you are pagan. Let us see how the Arab used to do with the stones. The Arab before Islam, they worship stones. And the Arab after Islam, they worship stones. We used to worship stones. Read with me. This is the purpose of the black stone. It had to be there because the Arab before Muhammad, they wanted this stone. They found a unique stone, uh, maybe coming from the space. And many spa many stones you can find in the desert because the desert is an open field where the sand, it's sand, and stones always, they, 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 they can be seen easy. Stones move the, st the, the sand from place to place. So what is covered today is going to be shown tomorrow So we used to worship stones and when we find we found a better stone than the first one We would throw the first one late and take the later <coughs> Do you see it? Okay Muslims why you kiss the black stone? I'm waiting for Muslims to give me an, a comment so I can put it in the screen. Muslims, why you kiss the black stone? Anyone? Uh, Muslim, uh, Muslim pervert, he said he would debate anyone here. Okay, answer us. Why you kiss the black stone, Muslim pervert? Why you kiss the black stone? Oh, sorry, his name is Muslim revert, not pervert, sorry. Why you kiss the black stone? As long as you are willing to debate us. Here we go, I'm debating you. I'm waiting for your answer. Why you kiss the black stone? Why Muhammad kiss the black stone? I'm waiting. They are pagan. One of the signs of being pagan is to kiss the stones and to believe the stones are holy. Anyone? I'm waiting. Look, look at them. They have no answer. Why you kiss the black stone? You are not pagan, right? Okay. Why you kiss the black stone? I'm just waiting for the answer. What happened to all the heroes? See, as long as I'm not looking at the text, all of them they want to challenge me. The second I mention their name, they go and hide in the corner. Are you searching Google? The Muslim revert, why, why you are looting? He is looting now. He, he came to us with a chapter from the Quran. It's called the chapter of Lul. Chapter of Lul is mean love at Allah. I'm talking to him seriously. He says to me, Lul, he don't have an answer. Why your prophet kissed the black stone and you kiss it today? 
here we go the Arab they worship stones before Islam and the black stone was exist before Muhammad and the Arab they kiss it so what you kiss it because you are a kafir you are a mushrik you are a pagan stone kisser not only that Muhammad he claimed that the black stone they forgive the black stone and the Yemeni corner uh, they forgive sin if you touch them. Let us see. Am I making things up? Hmm. Here we go. Isn't it, this is what pagan believe? Oh, Abu Abdul Rahman. It was narrated by Abdullah ibn Ubaid ibn Umayr that a man he said, let us read it in Arabic so we can laugh more. He said, إني سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إن مسحهما يحطان الخطية. Translation: Try not to die laughing. Oh Abu Abd al-Rahman, why I do only see you touching those two corners? Which corners? The Yemeni corner and the black stone corner. He said, I heard the messenger of Allah saying, touching them erase sin. Where is the Abdul? Where is the Abdul? You are not a pagan, correct? Okay. Why you touch a stones, you believe they erase sin. How touching stones erase your sin? You see, I, 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 I want to believe you now. I want to believe that you are not a pagan and you don't believe, you don't worship stones, but now we have a stones, your prophet kissed them, touched them and he was touching them because he believed that if you touch those two stones your sin is erased any abdu let us make a vote in the in the chat who of you believe that touching stones anyone believe that touching stones will erase sin is a pagan and cult act if you believe in that give me one if you believe that touching stone does not make you a pagan and if you especially if you believe that those stones are holy and they will erase your sin if you believe this is right to do give me two where is the muslims <clears throat> i want to see muslim voting for us what is the muslim pupa uh, Muslim people, are you driving, uh, delivering pizza now? Suddenly you have no answer now? Aren't you getting me busted? Don't you want to get me busted? Okay, get me busted and I will buy you ice cream. Hmm? This is Islam. Islam, nothing but a pagan cult, full of fictions, superstition stupidity and not only that the black stone look like a private part of a woman the reason for that because this is the private part of the god or the goddess who they make you your wife deliver a baby we showed you before like right now I, you know uh, i don't have my uh, computer and that will need some search to find uh, the islamic tafsir where it says that Muslim tafsir, not Christian tafsir, Christian Muslim books saying that women they use to go around the Kaaba when they have their period, which means they are seeking children, they want to have a children. And as long as they have a period, that means they are not carrying a baby yet. So what they go, they go around the Kaaba, they and they know they, they go naked, totally naked, totally naked. And they go around the Kaaba, they touch their private part. And uh, uh, then they place their hand inside the black stone. And this is why 
the black stone was white and the sin of mankind made it black what does that mean no. No. oh hold on we are using a I'm using a funny keyboard which does not stay in the screen and the letters they flip upside down it's not even working now anyway uh, I will I will find I will find the hadith where it says that they used to go around the Safa al Marwa or totally uh, sorry the Kaaba totally uh, uh, you know with no clothes And actually, after they do have uh, the go between the Safa and Marwa, they used to practice six after that right away. Uh, like, as you see, actually, in front of me, in the Hadith. You do Safa and Marwa, because Safa and Marwa is what? Safa and Marwa was two idols, one for a man, one for a woman. Supposedly, they have six in the Kaaba. Okay. And those two, Safa and Marwa, they are idols, they worship by Al Ansar. And when the Ansar became Muslims, the Ansar they asked Muhammad, We want to do a Safa and Marwa. Muhammad he says to them, um, um, Okay, I will make a verse says you do Safa and Marwa. Here we go. Because the Muslims they were complaining. Hold on. Here we go. He made a verse for them, saying, "Don't, uh, don't be, don't think it's sin to do Safa and Marwa." So why the Muslim they thought it's sin? Because this is the shrine of the Mushriki. It's a pagan shrine, and Muhammad was practicing that just to make the Ansar happy. Chapter 2, verse 158. You can go to Tafsir and see it right now. Chapter 2, verse 158. Here we go. Muhammad is a very, very, uh, he compromised. He won those people to convert to Islam just to make him a prophet. Doesn't matter really how, if they bring with them all their pagan belief. So look what happened. Here we go. You see? Allah mentioned that the believers dislike the wind between us going between us and Marwa. Do you see it? Dislike it. Why? Because it was something that the, 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 this is the shrine of the pagan. But the Ansar wanted that. Change the interpretation. This is Ibn Abbas. Let us see. Let us see a Jalalain. Tafsir. Uh, where is the oh, Hold on. Hold on. You will see that this is the shrine of the Mushrikeen. This is this is a pagan, totally pagan. Truly, the Safa al Marwa is two mountains in Mecca among water mark of Sharia, blah 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 blah. And then, okay, it says. Uh, You will see here when the Muslims wear a, a, a verse to circumvent to circumvention uh, around it, they, they, the Muslim they refuse to do that because the pagan Arab used to circumvent between them, and there was an idol <laughs> in the top of each mountain, which they used to stroke. This is exactly what they do in the Hajj now. Exactly, it was reported from Ibn Abbas that. Uh, 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 racing between the, the, the English here is funny between the two is not obligatory based on the fact that when no sin to be inc incurred so what is the purpose of it is not is not a must but Muhammad is just trying to compromise with the pagan Arab he add to Islam something the, the Arab they used to do this is the shrine of the pagan 
Is it me who's saying that? No. They asked Muhammad, we want it. We want to practice that. This is part of our belief. So Muhammad, he added to Islam. And he said, it's not a sin to do it. But it's, so it's not a sin. Is it important or not? It's not important. But you can do it. Have you ever heard of a cult like this? Yes, Islam. Either it's bad or it's wrong. Or it is from the from, from, from the teaching of Allah. So because people, they wanted Muhammad, he added something to Islam. And now the Muslim, they practice that. And this is the interpretation of the Muslims, as you see, not me. So where is Islam? There is no Islam. Islam is a collection of cults. Ansar, they want this. The other group, they want that. The ones who like the black stone, they like the black stone. The one who like the Kaaba, Amr al-Khattab, he like the Kaaba. We add the Kaaba. We add the black stone. We kiss the Yemeni corner. And we teach them that, kissing them and touching them, erase your sin. And then they give us a speech about pagans and the cross worshipping. No, no Christian worship the cross. Did Jesus kiss a cross? Did Peter kiss a cross? Did Paul kiss a cross? So if somebody kiss a cross, that is symbolic for his belief, respect, but this is not. But you kiss, uh, kiss the black stone and you believe that the black stone, you know, erase your sin. As we showed you. What kind of belief make you believe that touching a black stone will erase your sin? What is that? If this is not paganism. So when the Muslims, they make articles for us, claiming that this is how we know that Allah is God. Because Arab, they use to have idols. You have idol too. Nothing changed. The Kaaba now is holy, and you have a big idol in the Kaaba. It's the black stone, which is nothing but a private part of a woman. And you believe that this stone and the Yemeni corner, if you touch them, it erase your sin. Not only that, Muhammad, he said, that the black stone is going to witness for you in the judgment day. Look at this pagan belief that the black stone is a life, have eyes. Let us find the hadith. Sorry, because I'm being very slow and typing because simply I'm using a tablet. Here we go. Do you see it? Black stone is going to talk. And actually, a different hadith says that the black stone is the right hand of Allah. So whoever kisses it, he is kissing the right hand of Allah. Read with me carefully. I heard Ibn Abbas saying that the Messenger of Allah said this, this stone will be brought in the day of resurrection and will be given two eyes, which to see, and a tongue, which is to speak. And, with, and it will bear witness for those who touch it in sincerity. <laughs> Do you see it, Abdul? I don't know how, 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 uh, how clear the text for you guys on your screen, but uh, I'm doing my best. Do you see it? Hey, Christian, do you have any verse in the Bible saying if you touch stones, you know, do we have a stone, a holy stone? Do we have a stone will witness for us? You see, when the Muslims, they say that they have the same God of Abraham as the God of the Jews. Okay. Which Jew, he believe that there's a stone was going to witness to him in the judgment day and would have two eyes and ears and tongue? <laughs> tongue. I cannot put my ice cream in front of this stone now. Hmm? Which Jew, he believe in that? The stone? Is going to have eyes is going to talk is that a mickey mouse cartoon any abdul so this is the god of abraham the god of abraham teaching us that he have a stone if we kiss it 
and then you put your tongue and then one million people come after you and they lick that same stone and God knows how much bacteria and viruses you got and this is stone is going to witness for me why Allah need a stone to witness for us I thought Allah is all-knowing is Allah all-knowing or not Allah the all-knowing he need a stone to witness for us a stone today is judgment day I will give you tongue and eyes tell me what this guy he did in his lifetime <laughs> Or maybe she will speak like Zakam, like a hey brother and titter. Did the brother he what came to me and he kicked me and the thing and he kicked me. I got all the thing and I'm going to report for you all the thing you mad at Allah. So the stone will report to Allah everything about this person. So what about the one who don't kiss it? How Allah will know about him? Because if Allah all knowing, he do not need a stone to tell about whoever. Right. <laughs> so when somebody he come somebody he came to us and he gave us this this article speaking about Allah is the only true God. Allah is nothing, it's just a fabrication made by people before Islam and people after Islam carry the same name. The difference between uh, you see, I'm not my problem is not with the name. Let us say, like somebody says to me, uh, the Arabic Christians in the Middle East they use the word Allah, and this is a true, but because they are under the occupation of more than 1400 years, and they are not using the word as a name for God, they are using it as a word which is mean God for them, but in fact, it's not a word mean God, it is a name. So, uh, you know, like in, in uh, to make it simple, uh. It's about what you meant at the end of the day. As simple as that. I can say something, it might look rude, but I mean something else. So the purpose is what you meant, not what you just said. And the same for everybody. The Muslim, they believe in this God as a name, not as just a word mean God. And as you see, whoever this God, let us say the Muslim, for the sake of argument, they change the name. They call him Jesus. Still, your God is a pagan God. It's not the name. Let us say you change the name of your God, you call him Elohim. And by the way, Elohim is not a name. Actually, the Bible does not mention names of God. The Jews always, they avoid to speak about any word which is as a name to God. So they use always words which refer to him as the mighty. But they don't say really the name. Like even when the when Moses asked God, okay, what I will tell my people, who are you? He said, I am who I am. He did not give him a name. Because there is no name can contain him and no name can explain him. God is a miracle. The God of Islam have a name. Allah. And Allah is a moon God. Now, the moon God thing, maybe you are not convinced with it, but I can prove it in two seconds. The moon god married from the sun god and they have daughters. If we go on the Quran, because the Muslim they deny, right? The Muslim they say that there's a there is a verse that says don't worship the moon and don't worship the sun. Well, who said the moon and the sun are the god? The moon god is not the is not the moon, it is the god of the moon, and the sun god is not the sun, it is the, the, the god of the sun, which means the one who controls the sun. So the moon god and the sun god they married, they have sex. And they have three daughters, and this is mentioned in the Quran. So if Allah is not the moon God, so where is where is the three daughters coming from? Who is having sex with who? If we go to the Quran, uh, we will find this. This this board will drive me crazy. I can't even type. You see, I'm using uh, chapter 53 verse number 19 okay what is the name of the chapter of the Najm what a Najm the name of the chapter is the star why it's called the star go to the first verse 
in the name of Allah the beneficent this is not a verse this is something the Muslim add to fabricate then the first verse is by the star have you ever heard of a God he swear by the stars and what stars the stars when they come down they come down where what does that mean Allah swear by the stars when they come down if you go and read the story behind this you will die laughing Muhammad he said I swear by the, 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 the Lord of the stars his cousin he said I don't believe in the Lord of the stars then Muhammad he said to him aren't you afraid that Allah will send his dog to eat you like what the heck Allah he has a dog I thought dogs are haram and they are dirty and then the cousin of Muhammad he went on the trip according to Muslim to Yemen and then he heard the voice of a lion which is the dog of Allah because dog of Allah he don't do how 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 no he do <clears throat> he's a lion but he's a, he's a dog but he have a voice of a lion true story brother so here we ask ourselves what kind of God why why does God is swearing by the star because there's a star it's called a Shura or a, a planet they swear by him they worship him actually Muhammad one of his names they call him Ibn Abu Shara, which means the son of Abu Shara. Why? Because he and that guy who is, they call him such a name, they worship the same planet by the star. And then your, your friend did not error and deceived. Why? Because Muhammad, he stopped receiving verses from Allah. And he nor speak from his own desire. We can prove that this verse alone is enough to prove Muhammad to be a false prophet. Why? Because there's a chapter, it's called, it's about uh, Muhammad receiving sat satanic uh, uh, verses from the Satan. And Allah said he would take them out from the, from the Quran. And not only that, if Muhammad is not speaking of his own desire, how the Quran explained to us that Allah explained the baby creation in a stupid way. To the point he think that sperm became a dead blood and that the blood became a piece of meat and the piece of meat became bones if muhammad don't speak of his own desire so how you can explain to me this muhammad saying that the sperm stay inside the womb of a woman for 50 days muhammad don't speak of his own desire that's what the quran is saying Do you see it? Muhammad, he speak only what Allah told him. Muhammad did not go to school. He did not learn medication. He did not learn medicine. He did not join any kind of university. According to Muslims, he is illiterate. Where he learned this? The Quran says he don't speak of his own. Everything he says is from Allah. So Allah told him that the sperm remain in the womb of the women for 40 days actually I remember when I was in the womb of my mother I stayed there I think for I'm not sure but it was more than 50 days because you know uh, uh, that you know my mom she was eating cheese and I like it there the cheese goes there directly science you see Muhammad don't speak of his own uh, this is Allah words go right now and search in Google how long the sperm live maximum five days maximum and what womb the sperm go to the womb hey sperm where are you going i'm going to the womb brother and sister the prophet he did what that the semen and the sperm of the man brother live in the womb for 50 days and look here muhammad is really honest like he's not sure is it's 40 because he because the connection between him and allah was weak allah he said 40 or 50 i'm not sure the voice was not clear to me i mean what is that Hmm? Well, the, the sperm is doing there. What is uh, is is taking vacation? Fifty days. What what the sperm is doing there for fifty days? Going to school. So you say you make an article to prove to us that Allah is the only true God. This is the true God teaching. Huh? And look, according to Muhammad, the last decision Allah he make after he create the baby is male or female. Like what the heck? According to science, the first thing is decided is male or female before even the baby is created yet. 
according to Muhammad, the last thing the angel will ask, either Allah, make a hole here or make it or make a host. Look, what what do you mean? The guy now complete, the baby is completed. At the end, the angel asking Allah, male or female. And you are telling me this is the guy. I mean, I'm I'm really convinced, brother. I truly, 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 I'm convinced. I feel like I want to convert to Islam now. So look at those funny, silly articles. And not only that, the Muslim established website speaking about miracles of the Quran, science in the Quran. You are right. Look, look, all of all of the paper, paper money in the Quran. Guys, even the Quran spoke about paper. I want to see that. I cannot resist. I just saw this one first time. I never saw this one before. Hold on. Paper money in the Quran. I want to see that. Okay. <clears throat> Chapter 18, verse number 19. <laughs> it says there with this paper money, where it says that. Muslims, where where in the in the where in here it says this is paper money. Where is the word money? Any Muslim? Where is the word money in the verse? Who is a Muslim want to show me? I am ignorant in Arabic. I don't know Arabic. Who is the one to show me this? In the verse here, it says the word money. Where? Abdul. Any Muslim volunteer want to show us who speak Arabic in the text? I mean, it's um, it's 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 really crazy. The word warak mean paper. Okay, where is the word money? And what paper? And warak at that time have different meaning. We can go right now to the interpretation. Here we go. Hold on. Chapter 18, verse number 19. Shall we go to the interpretation? Oh boy. I put my phone and don't disturb and keep receiving phone call. All right. Let us go to the interpretation. Chapter 18, verse number 19. I want to see this money. Uh, and I'm, I'm really, uh, this is amazing. Uh, let's talk about paper money. Um, uh, I will not be surprised after two weeks if they say to us, uh, Allah spoke about dollar, dollar too and uh, uh, a pound. I mean, uh, paper money. So, chapter 18, be my witness. Chapter 18, verse number 19, as you see, as you see it. Okay. Here we go. We go to 18. Verse number 19. This is the first time I see this claim. <coughs> All right. Hmm. Let us see the paper money. Let us zoom in. All right. And uh, just a give the sunset uh, through the time. Uh, best long word. Now send them with silver of yours. Read. Uh, okay. 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 Where is the word? Where is the, where is the paper money? Anyone see the paper money? Warak, warak, it means paper, but it is not paper money. Today is used as word as paper. If we go to the dictionary, if we go right now to the Islamic interpretation in Arabic, you will see what the word warak means. Actually, let me do this. Just to just just for the sake of entertainment, you will see what the word warak means. Warak have nothing to do with the word paper today. The same as the word gay, it used to be happy not long time ago. Uh, if we go to Arabic, all right, 
and we choose at -tabari. Here we go. <clears throat> then at he made a story of it. فَبَعَثُوا أَحَدَهُمْ بِوَرَقِ يَشْتَرِي طَعَامًا فَلَمَّا أَتَى بَابَ مَدِينَتَهُمْ He said, uh, blah, 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 blah. So look at this. Warak here mean dirham. Is not the word paper. The warak itself is dirham. Is not paper money. It is a dirham, which is a coin. So they translated the word warak as it's mean today. And they say the word warak mean paper. So this is paper money. But at that time, this is what the money is called. Warakakum. It is dirham. So they did not mention the word warak as paper. They mentioned the word warak as a dirham. They did not mention even the word money. So warakakum, for the second you say that, it's mean money. And here we go in front of us. Actually, even in English it says that. Let us go to Ibn Kathir just to show you how they fabricate. Ibn Kathir, brother Ibn Kathir. Paper money, huh? Mm. This is what they used in the time of Muhammad. It is in the time of Muhammad use. So paper money was used in the Muhammad time. I mean, you are kidding who? <laughs> Unbelievable. Okay, here we go. This is Ibn Kathir. Read carefully with me. Uh, okay, so take with you your warak. So what is warak? Is your silver coins. This is what the word warak means. It's not a paper coin. It's not coins. Is not paper. Is it? The second you say coin is not paper. So why they are lying saying that the word the paper money is mentioned at that time? The word warak means coins. Today, in Arabic today, we use the word warak for what it's meant, paper. But in their time, it is about coins. So they did not mention the word money in the Quran. It says warak, which is coin. So we can replace the word warak with coin. The Muslim, they claim that this is about Allah protecting money, which is paper. So do you see how they fool people? Let us continue. Here we have tons of uh, all of those are in the Quran. The fats even in the Quran. Uh, Orograph graf, graphic in the Quran. The full moon in the Quran. Uh, but you know why want to waste our time with this fabrication? Any of those things. Who is a Muslim want to choose for us one of those to wake up to get it busted? Who is a Muslim when I choose for me one of those miracles to get it busted? Challenge. You choose it, I go for it. And I will get it busted in a second. Who want to do that? Any Muslim? Look, look, even hamburger is there. Fasting is there. Breastfeeding is there. Oh, 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 don't Hold on. Don't talk about breastfeeding, please. The only religion who teach breastfeeding for adult is, an, is is the cult of Islam. Is that true? Here we go. Breastfeeding. The Prophet of Allah, he ordered his Muslim women to give their breast so any strange man when I enter upon them he have to suck their boobs first sorry for saying the word boobs but what it says there Yahya related to me from Malik and Abdul Rahman ibn al-Qasim that the father told him that Aisha the wife of Allah messenger the prophet may Allah bless him and grant him peace admitted those whom her sister and daughters of her brother had nursed <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean the sister of uh, 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 Aisha or her nieces they used to sit in the front of her door any man when I enter upon her he have to suck their boobs for 10 time and this is as you see the story here in front of us 
a woman she is complaining that her husband is upset because she have an adult man in her house he's a servant a slave so her husband is unhappy for having a man in the house so the prophet he says suckle him the woman she said how I can suckle him and he is a grown man Muhammad laughed until his teeth came out like a cat <laughs> And he said to her, I know he is a growing man, suckle him. This is a miracle. And then Aisha, after that, she starts suckling anyone who want to enter upon Aisha. All right? As you see the story. Oh, those stories report the same thing. It's a very strong story. Uh... Here we go, the from hadith. Yahya related to me from Malik, etc. That Omar, blah, 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 blah. Okay. And it says here uh, that Aisha, the mother of the believers, sent him away while he was being nursed to her sister, Umm Kathum, been to Abu Bakr. He said, suckle him 10 times. <laughs> so she was nursing him, but he's not a child, he's a man. She is nursing the man so he can complete 10 times, which means 10 times in 10 different days. And then after that, the guy, he can enter upon Aisha. What an amazing scientific way. So now the Aisha, the guy, he will not have sexual desire to Aisha. It's a protection method. It's like... I don't want to use a bad word. Do you see it? Ten times. And then he says, uh, Salim said, Ummu Kalthum nursed me three times and then fell ill so that she had only nursed me three times. I could not go and see Aisha. <laughs> That is science. That is science, my friend. Now, not to forget to mention, I mean, why, as long as we are talking about science, all of us, we knew the Quran speak about the creation of the baby. You see, if, if God says something and one thing is a stupid, then it, the rest is a stupid too. So if we go in the Quran, now we go to chapter 86. We do not need to waste our time getting busted everything Muhammad he said in the Quran everywhere one thing is enough to prove that Muhammad and his God are false so chapter uh, uh, 86 verse 6 and 7 I don't know why it's not moving change all right now <clears throat> let us see uh, this is chapter 18. We don't want chapter 18. Here we go. One is enough to prove if Muhammad is a prophet of God or not. All right. Read with me carefully. And I will zoom in so you can see the text. Here we go. Human being is created from gushing forth fluid, meaning sexual fluid that comes out brust, uh, brusting forth from the man and the woman. Thus the child produced from both of them by the permission of Allah, proceeding from between the backbone and the ribs. Okay, this is Quran now, meaning the backbone of the man <laughs> and the ribs of the woman. <laughs> that is science. I mean, all the science explained here. According to Islam, the man have a sperm coming from his backbone, not from his balls. I think the reason for us males to have balls is like decoration. It's like women, they have uh, earrings. Men, they have bones. <laughs> 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 
so when when, when somebody uh, speak about uh, science to prove his God to us and then he fabricated or he fabricated this science this is additional proof that Islam is a false cult bad religion because if you are a believer you do not need to fabricate in order to prove to me a cult or a belief be honest this is what the Quran teaching and we showed you what Muhammad said and we can show you tons of examples of Muhammad saying stupid things what about and we mentioned many times like the Quran said the Sun set in murky water and Muhammad confirmed that and then the Muslim they try to cover the shame and the stupidity of the Quran they say oh it does not mean that but Muhammad he exposed them the verse is very clear Muhammad he said that the Sun set in a hot spring of water who is saying that Muhammad are they going to say this is a uh, daif no it's not daif this is science and the Quran come from it chapter 18 so I do not need really to prove this actually you can read my books you know Quran and science and deception of Allah and right now I'm working in new, more in your books. They will be published soon. So when a Muslim, he made an article for us to prove to us his God, claiming that the God of Muhammad is the same as the God of Abraham, we find that this is absolutely false, stupid, and it's just a statement of one person. His name is Muhammad. And the Muslim, they do their best to fabricate stories. As an example, the Muslims they say to us here, they are attacking Christianity, says the Christians, they believe in the Trinity. But the fact, the one who believe in the Trinity is the Muslims. How Islam is formed? By Allah, Muhammad, Jibreel. This is a Trinity. Is Islam formed by one man? No. By one person? No. By Allah alone? No. Always, all the stories of Islam, based on three. the God, the angel, the prophet. Three. If you go in the Quran, any verse, anyone, look, in the name of Allah, the Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Three. Why Allah define, define himself by three? The total numbers of the names of Allah is nothing but multiply of the number three, 99 names, which is nothing but the age of Jesus in earth, 33 x 3. It is Islam who base in three. If a Muslim want to do abolition, his religion is not accepted, his, his prayer is not accepted unless he do things three times. He have to wipe his hand three times. He have to blow his nose three times. He have, he have, he have. Everything is three times. Go, go, go right now. Search in Google how to do abolition. You will see you have to do every limb of your body, which is required in the abolition, three times. Which means if you do it four, it's not accepted. If you do it two, it's not accepted. The perfection number in Islam is three. How many days uh, uh, Mary, she fasted three times? Zachariah, three times. What is the final divorce in Islam? Three times. Islam is religion of three and not only that Muhammad when he report a story he always report the story at the end he report the last sentence three times when Muhammad he enter place he say assalamu alaikum three times which is very boring and stupid imagine I enter a place and I say assalamu alaikum you say okay shalom to you we say shalom to you they again say shalom to you and you say okay shalom to you they said no no shalom to you I mean that's it If we type in the hadith the word three times, what we will find? Look at this. All of Islam is based on three times. Uthman uh, uh, read, cold water, blah, 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 blah. Okay, in evolution, he said, he washed his palm in his hands three times. He, raised, he uh, rinsed his mouth and uh, sniffed water from his nose three times. Why you want to sniff water from your nose? Which is very disgusting, by the way, and stupid. So everything is three times. 
Everything in this card is based on number three. He said, "Verily, Allah, the Most High, will do no, will do nothing, anything, will uh, uh, with the affection of your sister, impose on herself, command her to cover her head and to ride and fast three days. Why three days? Explain to us who is a Muslim. Tell us why three days. In the name of who? In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit." Huh? Even if you pee, <laughs> even if you pee, you have to shake your private part three times. Any Muslim want to explain to us what is the mystery behind the number three? Hmm? Why? What will happen if you do it four times? It's going to come apart. What will happen, Abdul? If you go to the bathroom and you shake it four times, it's going to break. It's going to come out. It's going to collapse. What will happen exactly? And why three times? Hello? Didn't know. So we believe in the Trinity, you practice everything in Trinity, including even your pay. And if you look at the Muslim answers in the chat, you will find nobody have an answer. Who's a Muslim I tell me what is the purpose of shaking your penis three times? Well, what is that? What is the secret? The one who asks Allah for paradise three times, he will get it. What the heck? Okay, Allah, Allah, three times. Paradise, paradise, paradise. Here we go. I got paradise. I guess I got paradise. I mean, look how easy it is. Look how easy to get paradise in Islam. Just ask Allah for three times. Four times will not work. Two times will not work. Three times will work. Do you see it? And the funny and the, what make it more more horrible, the Muslim they say to us, the, the Trinity does not make sense. But Islam, as you see, based on Trinity, Nothing, the perfection in Islam is, is number three, not one. But supposedly Allah is one. Look at this. Jesus in the Quran, he is a three in one. <clears throat> uh, oh boy. Madness is madness. Do number three. What's wrong with this website? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> All right. Chapter four, verse 171. Look what the verse is saying. Look like my internet is going bad. People of scripture, don't exaggerate about your religion, nor etc. Okay, and now he's talking about Jesus. Look, don't say Trinity. No, but look, Jesus Mary, the Messiah, was only a messenger. He's a man. Okay. And then he is the word of Allah. So he's a word and he's a man. He is the word of God. And he is the man. And he is a spirit from him. Well, this is a three in one person. Jesus is the word. Jesus is the spirit. Jesus, Jesus is the man. How a three can be one? Any Muslim can explain to us? The same verse saying don't say Trinity is the same conf confirming that a Trinity is possible. It's logical. Actually, it's a fact. Because you just admitted that Jesus himself is not exist unless of the three. The man, the word, the spirit. How Jesus is a three in the same time one. And not only that, Jesus is the only one who was called in Islam, Ruhullah, the spirit of Allah. And he is the only one who was called Kalimatahu, Kalimatullah, the word of Allah. 
Adam is not the word of Allah, Muhammad not the word of Allah, and both of them they are not the spirit of Allah, Jesus is. How we can explain that? They don't know. Or what they know? Say no Trinity. If Muhammad says say Trinity, they believe in Trinity. Muhammad says so no so Trinity. Now they make make fun of it. Why Muslims don't make fun of Jesus being the son of Mary? How a man can be son of Mary? It's impossible. Because Muhammad he said, okay, he is a son of Mary. He have no father. So if this is not exist in their Quran, trust me, they will add that to the article and they will make fun of you. They will call a Christian prince, say, hey, Christian prince, <laughs> do you really believe that Jesus is a son of Mary? He have no father. <laughs> But I never heard of a Muslim making fun of that. Why? Because it's in the Quran. So the whole idea is whatever Muhammad say, they take blindly. And Muhammad is an idiot, and we prove that all over. He speaks stupidity. He teaches stupidity. The sun set in murky water. The the the, uh, the baby resemble the mother or the father based on who uh, who will come first. Here we go. Muhammad, you don't speak of his own. How the man, how the baby resemble the, the parents. If the father have orgasm first, the baby will be like the father, he will be a boy. If the mother have orgasm first, the baby will be a boy. <laughs> this is Muhammad, this is the science. Muhammad, he knew it all. He knew that Trinity is wrong. The same he knew that the one who comes first will make the baby look like the parents. How Muhammad knew that unless he is sent by God? No way. Obviously, he must be sent by God. I mean, the proof in the front of you. Isn't it clear? So when you ask them, you say to us that Allah is God. Allah cannot be God for many reasons and the proof in the front of us. God cannot be a fool and your God is a fool. Have you ever heard of a God? You don't remember which one he created first? The earth or the heaven? The trees or the stars one chapter he says he created the stars first and the other chapter says he created the trees before the stars what kind of god does god is have you ever heard of a god you think man is created from a sperm and the sperm became blood huh this is a foolish teaching I mean, name for me one thing in the Quran is not stupid. Let us make a challenge. Who is in the chat from the Muslim community would like to give us a verse proving Allah to be God? Just one verse. Hmm? Like this one, maybe? Look at this. So beautiful. The sperm became congealed blood are you sure all the sperm a drop of a sperm became baby a drop a drop nutfa is a drop of a sperm not just a semen it is a drop of a sperm it's not it's like this the whole sexual fluid a drop that will make him a baby this is what the Quran is saying and that baby, that sperm, will become a dead blood, as you see. And then the dead blood will become a lump, lump. I don't know if I'm saying it correctly. Then he made the lump into bones, brother. And then he closed the bones, brother. That's, that's science. And look here at the false translation. You see the last verse? It says, Allah is the best to create. I will go with this before we get, to, get them busted. How Allah, he says, the best to create if he is the only creator. If I say I am the best to create, that's mean. I am admitting there is other creators. However, the fact is, in Arabic doesn't say this. In Arabic, it says, the best of the creators. If we change the translator, let us do that in front of your eyes. Just change the translator. You will see. How the corruption of the Quran will appear immediately. It doesn't say the best to create. It says the best 
of the creators you see look 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 in a second do you see it the best of the creators this is alone proof to us that Islam believe in monotheism is a lie because either Allah here is lying to be the best of the creators because if there is no other creators how you say you are the best of the other creators imagine I say to you I am the best of mankind but there is no mankind except me how silly how stupid is that that's mean I did lie in order to be the best of a creators we should have a creators who are they a Muslim Abdul he tried to be smart he says to you oh human being a created bicycle created car no creators according to Quran is to create a life now we can prove that easy the Quran says you worship someone cannot even create a fly so what the Quran put in putting a standard for believing in God if somebody can create a fly he is God the Quran says that not me that's mean <clears throat> this website is really funny oh mankind read it are you worshiping are you worshiping someone he cannot even create a fly do you see it you call beside Allah who will never create a fly so if there is someone can create a fly he is worthy of worship but this is a contradiction because the, the Quran says Jesus created from the mother bird the Muslim they say by permission of Allah but that will not change the fact that he became a creator and however uh, saying by the permission of Allah will not change the fact that this is just a claim I can say that Jesus did all his miracle by my permission he Jesus oh go go and make the man see a Christian prince says that he is the one who gave him permission. That's silly. Yesterday, a Muslim woman in the chat, she, in the text she posted in the comment, that uh, the reason uh, uh, Jesus uh, have miracles and Muhammad don't have miracles because Allah don't want to give him miracles. Like, what the heck? Ooh, this is the reason? So all miracles were given to Jesus, including to be creator. What the purpose of making Jesus creating a bird? That to make me believe he is a prophet or to make me believe he's God. So if the purpose of Allah to make me believe that Jesus is a prophet, that means he's a fool. Here we go. I did not believe in him to be a prophet. There's more than 3 billion human beings in this earth who they are a Christian believe in Jesus as God. So what we would do with those? So if the purpose of those miracles was given to Jesus to make him look like he is a prophet, Allah fail, Allah is stupid. Because too much miracles. Jesus raising people from death. Jesus creating people, creating from the mud. He's like God. He's God. He created from the mud, living thing, and then he breathed into it. How Allah he created Adam, he made the mud and he breathed into it. How Jesus he created a bird, he made mud and he breathed into it. Here we go. <clears throat> Jesus supposed he is talking here. I fashion for you. Did you see, guys? It says, I fashion. I, not Allah fashion. I fashion for you out of the clay, the likeness of a bird. And I breathe into him. And it is going to be bird by Allah leave. Who care about Allah leave now? By Allah leave or not? That's a claim. But by saying that Jesus, he breathed, that's meaning from the breath of Jesus, life is given. How a human can breathe into mud and that will give life. Jesus is doing the same as God doing, according to Quran. He can give life even to dust. This is just dust, dust mixed dirt mixed with water. 
Jesus, he made the blind see, and this is even in the Bible too. And from the spit of his mouth, he gave him eyes. You see, when Jesus, he put uh, the mix in the eyes of the blind man, he is creating eyes for him. He's not, he's not healing him. He is creating eyes. The person is born blind. You cannot fix that. And then the Muslim, they say to you, well, it's by the leave of Jesus, the leave of Allah. Well, okay, let us assume that this is by the leave of Allah. Why Allah don't give by his leave? Miracle to, to Muhammad. The Muslim, they say to you, in the time of Jesus, there was a lot of things. So it was time of science. So Jesus was beating their science. It was stupidity. Jesus was not giving medicine. What science? In the time of Jesus, what does science? Muhammad came 600 years after Jesus. So in the time of Jesus, science was more advanced from the time of Muhammad. That is the most stupid argument ever. But because they can't explain to you why Jesus have all those miracles and Muhammad have none. What science? Muhammad, was Jesus giving medicine? Did Jesus say to the guy, the blind man, hey, go and drink this three times a day? Jesus says to the blind man, see, he saw. He said to the man, he can't walk, walk, we walk. What's, what science? So what we see in front of us is confirming that Jesus is above mankind. The Quran confirmed that he breathed and from his breathe life come. The Quran confirmed that he knew the unseen. Look at this. And I announced into you what you have ate and what you store in your houses. The Quran says only Allah knows the unseen. This is unseen. The Quran says Muhammad, he know nothing about the unseen. Jesus know everything about unseen. Whatever you do at your home, how Jesus can tell you the unseen? That means Jesus is everywhere. You see, in order, uh, Jesus is talking to, 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 to the children of Israel, which means any one of them, he says, okay, tell me what I did at home. Which means he's talking to thousands of people. Imagine, I know what thousands of people just did at home. How Jesus can do that? By the leave of Allah? That is the most stupid answer. And actually, even the Bible says that Jesus was reading the mind of the Jews. So he says, which one is easier? To say to him, carry your bed or forgive or your sin is forgiven. So Jesus in the Bible, he read your mind. And Jesus in the Quran, he knew the unseen. And no one know the unseen, save God. And claiming that this is a miracle given by Allah, you have to prove it. And the Quran proving to us that Allah is an idiot. He's a stupid. He's a fool. The Quran is a book of stupidity. Even the history is wrong. Mary is the sister of Aaron. The Muslim, they try to fabricate Muhammad in his time. They get busted. The Jews, they said to him, they laugh at him. They said, but, but Mary, she has nothing to do with Aaron, you idiot. Mary was many hundred years after Aaron. So Muhammad, he wanna fix that uh, bump he did, the poo, poo He said, oh, in their time, they used to call them by the great, great ancestor, but Mary, she is not from the tribe of Aaron. And since when she is called, look, the Quran says that Aaron is the, uh, is the father of Mary. The chapter three in the Quran, this is, we are here, chapter three. It's called al Imran. Okay, who is Ali Umran? The stupid Quran talk about Ali Umran in this chapter. Who are the Ali Umran? Mary, Isa, Musa, Aaron. Nice to meet you. But the fact, Mary, she is not from the tribe of Musa, you idiot. So Ali Umran here proving Islam and Allah to be false because Mary, she is not from Ali Umran. And her father, his name is not Umran. So the Quran teach and Islam teach that Amran is the father of Mary and he is the father of Moses and Aaron. And the reason for the confusion, because the idiot Muhammad, he heard the Jews saying that Aaron and Moses, they have a sister, her name is Maryam. And this is exactly the same name of the mother of Jesus. So the foolish Muhammad, he said, okay, 
So it's a the, here we go. Maryam, the sister of uh, of Aaron. <laughs> so the foolishness. God cannot be a fool, and Allah is a big time fool. God cannot be stupid, and Allah obviously is stupid. God cannot be ignorant, and your God obviously is ignorant. He do not know how the baby created. He think the sun set in murky water. He think the women have a sperm coming from their breast. He don't even know how the how, how the earth and the heaven is created. And the top of that, the Muslim they try to fabricate. As an example, they say to us, I'm sure many of you heard that the Muslim says that uh, uh, the Big Bang, the Big Bang, brother, hmm? the Big Bang is the, in the Quran. Where? Brother, here, brother. Let me show you, brother. Big Bang in the Quran. By the way, we don't big. Uh, I don't believe in the Big Bang. The second you say you believe in the Big Bang, you are a kafir, my friend. What Big Bang? But because they are hypocrite, they are trying. Uh -huh. uh, hold on. Here we go. They claim that this verse is about the Big Bang. Where is this Big Bang? Read with me. Have no, have not those who disbelieve known that the heaven and the earth were one piece, and then we part in them. This is the Big Bang. Abdul, it says there was heaven and earth, and Allah He separated them. The Big Bang doesn't say there is heaven and earth, and then the Big Bang happened, which means the Big Bang happened after the. <laughs> according to this verse, like if this is about the Big Bang, that means the Big Bang happened after the earth and the heaven is exist. Stupidity. And by the way, this verse is proving to us that the Quran is false. Why? Because the earth and the heaven are not separated. We are inside the space. We are little tiny dust inside a huge, amazing mass of space. So how we are separated? We are not. So this verse proving. Look at this. To make it more stupid, he says, "Have not those who disbelieve known that the heaven and the earth were one piece?" So he's talking about something known in the time of Muhammad. Everyone believe in that. This is a legend that God He left the heaven up from the earth. And he put columns. If we go into the different verse in the Quran, <clears throat> we will find this. I mean, this is endless, man. <laughs> you see, verse take us to verse, verse take us to verse. See, chapter 3, verse number 21. It says, Allah he is up to heaven, the sky, with uh, columns which you cannot see. You see the translation who raise it up the heaven without a visible support but there is a support which is invisible what is the visible support or let us say the invisible support we can find that in chapter Qaf. if you go to chapter Qaf in the Quran you will find that there is an azure mountain surrounding the earth from every direction and the sky is like a dome in the top of it this is why the Quran says that Allah He made the, the, the heaven like a roof. Here we go. The embryonist is coming to take Muhammad because he is suffering from epilepsy. All right. If we read here the interpretation, we will find this. It says the following From the narration and the authority of Ibn Abbas, Ibn Abbas is the cousin of Muhammad, saying, Half, half, he says, it's an azure mountain of overlooking the world, this world. And the color of the sky is taken from it. This is how Allah he, rest, uh, he left of the sky. So it's an azure mountain. That's why we don't see it. It's a blue, but it's in fact it's surrounding the earth, and the sky is taking the, the the color of this is science. I mean, don't you believe in Islam? Here we go. Do you, do you see it? It's clear. And not only that, the Muslim they say to you, do you know that the Quran speak about? Uh, um, The atmosphere, brother. Atmosphere, where? In the Quran? Yes, brother. Where? You can search for it in Google and you will die laughing. But the Quran never spoke about that. 
let us say the atmosphere the most time they talk about if it's really atmosphere or, or it is it is it is farting fear so the quran says <clears throat> uh that allah he created seven heavens Now this website is very weird. All right. Chapter 2, verse number 29. Allah, he created seven skies. And the earth was created first. Yet they lie, they say that the heaven was created, the, the Big Bang, we believe in the Big Bang. Do you see it? It is he who created for you all that on earth. Then he went up to heaven and he made them seven heaven, which means the heaven was finished after the earth. We go to different verse. All right. Um. In chapter 65, verse number 12, Allah created seven earth and seven skies. Muslims, is it true that there is seven earth? Where Muhammad got the seven earth? This is from the Greek. The Greek, they have seven planets, which they consider they are. It's the same as the earth. We can go right now and search in Google. Muhammad, he, he thinks that those are the only seven planets that exist. So there's seven heaven and seven seven earth. <laughs> so my friend, this is have nothing to do with God. This is the most stupid. And not only that, Muhammad he go farther and he claimed that Shaitan he spy at Allah and nobody can go out of the zone of the earth. But there's people they went to the space. Let us find some verses. <clears throat> man oh man okay uh, it's uh, I'm uh, being slow here because I'm using the tablet <clears throat> chapter 55 verse number 33 it says Allah challenging the genie and the human to go out of the earth so who is the one first one who went out of the earth? It was in the time of the Soviet Union, Kuffar. Allah saying, you cannot leave. And without permission, of who is the one who had permission? Muslim, they say, and Muhammad explained, only the prophets and the angels. That's it. Nobody. So if you can, if you have power to penetrate out of the region of the heaven and the earth, go. Go if you can. You cannot. But Allah never imagined, or Muhammad, Akka Muhammad, that time will come and man will go to heaven or go to the space. In different verse, Muhammad, he claimed that shaitan, he used to spy always at Allah. And Allah, after he sent Muhammad, he don't allow that no more. So he shoot shaitan in his ass. Let us see together. Chapter 15, verse number 18. Allah saying, and this is, by the way, the Muslim, they say to you, and we have guarded the heaven. They call this uh, uh, verse and the verse after it, and they say, this is the atmosphere, brother. Look, brother, the heaven uh, is guarded, but it's the opposite. Here, it's not the earth is guarded, it's the heaven is guarded, which means, Shaitan, he tried to steal information. He worked for the KGB, CIA. And what Allah he do, he showed him in his ass. Read the verse. So do you see how they fabricate, they say the atmosphere in the Quran? And Muhammad here is explaining what is the shooting stars. We see them in the 
in, in the in the sky actually Muhammad he think that those are not shooting stars those are stars literally stars so look what the Quran says Allah he created the stars to shoot the ass of shaitan science this is science you see we are just I wasn't going to talk about this I mean this is endless uh, <clears throat> what is the purpose to to make the stars decoration and to shoot the shaitan in his ass and actually I am witnessing in the Middle East, we have a lot of shaitan. Their ass is red from shooting them by the stars. Look at this, brother. Hmm? And we have beautified the world of uh, the heaven with lamps. And we have made them missiles for the devils. We just showed you the verse before, chapter 15. If the shaitan tried to spy, Allah will shoot his ass. And this is what Allah he do. He shot him with a star. Star. I mean, shaitan, according to Muhammad, is in your nose, piss in your ears. And have dinner uh, in your uh, belly bomb. Yet Shaitan need a star to kill him. I mean, do you know how big the star? So Muhammad, he look at night, he sees star failings. He think those are really stars. Those are just rocks going through the atmosphere, shooting stars, meteor. He think those are really stars. So Muhammad now he explaining to us a scientific fact. That those are the missiles of Allah. Shaitan tried to spy at Allah, and then Allah Star War. I mean, why you don't want to convert to Islam? Isn't it obvious that this is science? Here we go, Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him, explained to us that uh, the reason for those uh, to fail down, those are you, you see the Muslim, they cannot lie. It says lambs. Do you see it says lambs? Does it say lambs or I'm making things up? This is the Muslim translation. Does it say lambs or I'm making things up? Let me make it big, make it big for the blind. Here we go. I know there's many, a lot of blind here. Do you see it? Lambs. So this is not a meteor. This is a lamb. So Allah created the lambs to decorate the heaven, brother. Decorate the heaven, beautify the heaven. And by the way, the major number of the stars are not even visible. So what do you mean to beautify it? To who? To us? This is stupid. We don't even see one, maybe of out of billions percent of the stars. We see nothing actually in our naked eye. Comparing to the number of the stars, the Bible says nobody can count the stars. Count this number because actually they are increasing and, in and decreasing, which means they are always a newborn or new dead. So they fool, they try to fool you. They assume that you are a fool, ignorant. So they make website like this, saying the Quran is a book of science. Minerals in the Quran, brother. Minerals, look. Uh, extreme. Uh, hydrothermal vent. Hmm? Uh, Astrobi. I don't even know how to read it. Uh, smoke. Uh, fire. Whirl, uh, sunlight, brother. Sun, uh, yeah, sunlight. The photos, all of this in the Quran. And look at this mosquito. This mosquito present Muhammad telling us his lies. Look at the nose. What may the Quran speak about mosquitoes? What the Quran speak about mosquitoes? I want to see that. I'm interested now. What this? I like mosquitoes. The first time I met mosquito, it was in Japan. I met the Miss Jenny and Miss uh, Sasuki and Mosquito. That is the first time I met mosquito. Yeah, mosquito. The Quran says about mosquito. What the Quran says about mosquitoes? Please tell me, please. Chapter two, verse number twenty-six. Okay, what the Quran says? Inna Allah la yastahi an yadrub mathala ma ba ma ma mathala ma ba uda fama fawqaha. Okay. Muslim translation. This says that science discover that in the top. First of all, ba is a female. Look at this. Ba is a female. Abdul Ba'uda is a female. This is an Arabic word for male and female. We call Ba'uda. We don't check if they have balls or not. I mean, they have a stupid argument, but they, they fool you. What is the word in Arabic for a male mosquito, Muslims? There's no Arabic word. All the most of the insects in Arabic they come as female, the same as the word namla ant. They said you do you know that the Quran says that an ant, female ant, she told the other ant to run away. According to science, brother, only female ants is the one who give warning. But Abdul, in Arabic, we call all ants namla. 
as long we speak about individual one we call it nimla male or female the same as for the mosquito what a bunch of flyers and look the verse saying Allah is not shy to give you example from a mosquito and what is above they make it as okay there's they find the parasite live on the mosquitoes brother but this is what the Quran is saying the Quran is saying that Allah is not shy to give you example even if it's about a mosquito as a size and what is above here they make it a parasite if you go right now here we go just to show you how they lie chapter 2 verse 26 this is English English lies no shame no shame chapter 2 26 let us see the real meaning is it really about parasite 20 hold on why is not coming What are you at 12? This guy has stopped with a 12. This is a make a theory. Something wrong with the internet. Okay. Chapter 2. Verse. Yeah. What's wrong with this thing? I don't know what happened. This website is not functioning. Let us go to this website. Okay, forget about this one. Chapter 2. Twenty-six. Let us see if this is what they are saying, that there is a parasite in the top of the mosquito, or Allah saying he is not shy to speak about something small, as small as mosquito and higher in size. Wait. Allah mentioned to the Jews objection to the Quran uh, uh, smiles saying Lu Allah uh, disdaineth not he cannot abstain from co uh, coining smiles and how he uh, this this his, his deen mentioning something that if all a crea created being were to join forces to create they would not be able to do so Allah does not uh, disdain to coins a substitute. Allah does not disdain. Okay, and then the says, Okay, here we go. So it is let alone a smiles or of something greater than a fly or a spider. So what the verse saying here, Allah is not shy to talk about anything, even if it's a small as a, as an insect and higher. And the same mention in different places in the Quran. The Muslim, they say to you, do you know that the Quran is speaking about nuclear? Where is that? They say to you the word dharra. Dharra, brother, brother. Here we go. Chapter 4, verse number 40. If you ask anyone what the word dharra in Arabic today, they say to you, this is nuclear. But this is this is the Arabic name which is fabricated today to fit with the, with the modern science. But the word dharra is an ant. Look. The Quran saying that Allah will not misjudge or wrong judge even in the weight of an ant. Do you see it? In the Muslim website, they change the word ant to make it about a nuclear, to make it a miracle. Allah speak about the weight of nuclear, neutron. When the fact the word is an ant, even this is the Muslim translation. Do you see it? So in their website, the ant became a nuclear. Just to make you believe that this is amazing, the Quran, look, and the, uh, Allah, he's speaking about nuclear. But, the, but it is an ant. So the ant became, maybe it's a nuclear ant, yeah. <laughs> it's an ant. In their website, you can go there, and you will find they are making the same, the same as they made the mosquito. They make it about a nuclear. Let us see where is the nuclear one. Nuclear or proton or whatever. All, all, all of this is the same. All of those is the same. Dark energy, north, the gravity, okay, all of this. Petra, straight light, sonic weapons, all of this. Even the Quran speak about sonic weapons. What sonic weapons? Allah and the Quran speak 
about uh, prepare for them your soul and your arrows and Muhammad speak about in the judgment day that the people of Gog and Magog the, they were at the end of the time that's it the end of the time they will use their arrows and the Muslim they will use their arrows for seven years for fire Let us see. And this is another fiction Muhammad he believe in, which is the Arab at that time believe in too, that there is a, pe a, gr a group of a creatures, they are not a human, they are called Gog and Magog, and they are a huge in number, and they will attack all mankind. But Zulqarnain, Alexander the Great, he put a dam between us and them, and until the judgment day, they will not be able to go through. Uh, you see here he's saying, the Messenger of Allah says, woke up, in his face and he said red face la ilaha illallah who to the arab from the evil has a drone night muhammad here making false prophecy he claimed that people of gog and magog are coming here we go false prophecy 1400 years ago today a hole has been opened and uh, the barrier of gog and magog and uh, the guster uh, indicate the size of the hole, you know. So Muhammad saying, Oh Arab, we'll be ready. The Gog and Magog are coming, and this 14 years ago. And we will never see Gog and Magog. It's a lie. And this is mentioned again in chapter 18 in the Quran. All of those who are speaking about the same story. Look, I mean, we are looking for the hadith, but it's English. All of this fiction. I mean, it looks like I will spend uh, maybe. Look, the people of Gog and Magog, from every human, there was one, there's 1,000 equal to the number. Look at this. The Messenger of Allah said that the high road, okay, okay, okay. Uh, Muhammad, he says, from every one of you, from every 1,000 of you, 99 hundreds will go to fire. People, they were like, what? And here the liar, to cover his bum, he changed it. He says, oh, I mean Gog and Magog. But the fact, he did not say that, read carefully. He said that from every 1,000 of you, 999, they will go to hell. Read carefully. Uh, <clears throat> Allah would say, bring forth. Let us zoom in. O Adam, and I would say, uh, blah, 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 okay, O Lord, and blah, 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 okay, and then he says, uh, bring forth the group, the dozens of fire, the, the people who will live in fire. He, Adam, would say, who are the, 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 the inhabitant of the fire of hell? It would say, they are out of every 1,999. He, the Holy Prophet, says, it is this juncture that every child would become white-haired and every pregnant woman would a port. So Muhammad here is making a uh, making a making a, a prophecy, but when the Muslim they complain about the number, Muhammad he claimed that this is about nine hundred ninety-nine from the people of Gog and Magog, because simply he's a false man. And then they said to him, O oh, Messenger of Allah, who among us would be the unfortunate person who would be doomed to hell? He said, Good tidings for you. Yeah, Gog and Magog, Gog and Magog would be those a thousand. But what this thousand? This is about Adam and his children. Gog and Magog, they are not from the children of Adam. I mean, it's a just a stupid fiction. And according to Muhammad, the numbers of Gog and Magog is 1,000 to 1, which means if we are 7 billion now, we should have 7,000 billion of the creatures of Gog and Magog, which is the creatures, they have big ear and they can even sleep inside it. And they are very aggressive and very dangerous. Anyway, I think this is enough for today. So when a Muslim, he says to us that he have a God and he want to prove to us that God is God, 
His name is Allah. That will be the most silly argument because your God cannot be God, for God is not a fool, God is not a stupid, God he knew history, God he knew how to create, God he knew how to speak. God cannot be ignorant and God cannot be a liar and the Quran confirm all of this. And God don't teach bad ethic. As an example, the Quran Okay, guys, can you hear me? Sorry, I lost my internet. And we just get it back. I'm not sure why. We got that disconnect. We apologize. All right, we are back. I don't know what happened, uh, but we lost internet. Uh, but anyway, no, I'm not using the neighbor internet. Uh, actually, here, if you are far away from the router, more than a uh, uh, few uh, feet, the, the internet is bad. So, uh, as you see, there is no way that this God can be God, and we prove it easy and simple. This is this is cannot be God. God first teach ethic. God is not a criminal. The God of Islam is everything wrong. Even marriage in Islam is not mentioned as marriage. It's a contract of sex. The God of Islam is 100% against the God, the teaching of gods in Christianity. The Muslim, they claim they worship one God. Who cares if he is one or two or three? To make it simple, the idea of worshiping one God, and if that will make you superior, that means you are stupid. Because if there is somebody who worship 1,000 God, but they are true gods, who cares? That means he's right. So it's one or two or five, doesn't make any difference. Christian worship on God, the Jews worship on God. So that is silly argument. So the Muslim, when they speak about worshiping one God, it is just a silly argument, trying to make you believe like in something more, make more sense. In fact, if you think about one God in the Quran, that is not really accurate because the Quran make it clear that Allah, he have family. As an example, when Allah, he says, uh, if you want to take a partner, he would like to take it from our kind. Okay, what is our kind? Our self. Who is our self? This board is really annoying. I cannot even type. 
in this chapter, chapter 21, verse number 17, it says, if we had wished to find, a, they say translation here, pastime, the fact the word pastime, it's fun, the word fun, lahu. Lahu in Arabic mean a woman, women, lahu. And we got busted the Muslims with it many times by showing their own interpretation. So Allah is saying, if we want to have a woman for fun, like imagine how dirty this war. Imagine you say, I'm going if I want to have fun. You are not even respecting the women, you are calling her fun. So if we want to have fun, we could have found it in ourselves, not our presence. If we go to the interpretation, you will see this. Remember, this is chapter 21, verse number 17. And remember, the Muslim they claim that they worship one God. Okay, how you worship one God, but you are saying this. 21 17 <clears throat> read carefully this is Ibn Abbas and if you don't like Ibn Abbas we can show you uh, both of them they are saying if Allah wish to have a partner he will take it from ourself okay how ourself will be a woman this is Tafsir Ajlalain remember Allah is one right okay Had we desire to find some division, that which provide division in the way of a partner or a child, we have found it with ourselves. But Allah, ourself, Allah calling women, ourself. How Allah is one, but ourself, Allah taking partner from ourself. You see, when you talk to Muslim, they say how Allah say we. They say to you, we mean majestic. Allah don't mean that he is many. He is one. But he say we like kings. They say we. But this is silly. I mean, your God is speak like kings trying to copy them. That will make him majestic. But if he's almighty God, why he tried to copy a, a silly human being? I mean, this is stupid. So here you see that the word we explain differently because he's not saying we actually here. He says if we would like to take a partner as a female woman to sleep with her, we would like to take it from ourselves. The women who will sleep with, they are ourselves. So Allah is a multi-person and many persons, and there is some of those persons are females and they are the Huris, the one who they are supposedly in heaven waiting for sex. Or the angels. So how Allah is one, but He count ourselves as partner. Allah will partner with ourselves. Allah partnering with who? This is your Muslim interpretation, not me. So don't tell me I'm fabricating. This is your official government website of the Kingdom of the Kong, King of Jordan. We who? Allah will partner with who? With female women to do what to have sex with them and the Muslim they say to you but we did not do so thus we never desire it but it's possible what have proven to us that there is ourself as you see ourself Allah speaking about that there is ourself and ourself contain him and females and angels so all of them they are from the same kind you see I cannot say ourself about me and my goat correct because first of all the goat is not from my family and she is not even from my kind so when I say ourself and ourself contain women and angels that mean we are from the same kind otherwise how we can count them ourselves Somebody saying the contribution of the verse, Allah does not have partners. This is not the issue. I don't care if you have a partner or not. But he's saying if you want to have a partner, he will take it from ourselves. <laughs> Correct, guys? 
I don't care if he took partner or not. By the way, this is all the news. Maybe now he changed his name, his, 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 his idea. This is 1400 years ago. He don't have a desire. Maybe now he have a desire. And you tell me why Allah is saying, if he like to have a partner like a woman, he will take it from herself if he don't have a penis. Isn't it silly? You see, when I say, if I desire to have a partner, let us say, I want to marry. I will say, okay, if I desire to have a partner, I will marry a woman from Africa. Huh? Okay, that's mean I'm a man, and I am a male, and I have a private part of a male, and I'm desiring a female. Okay, that makes sense. We are talking about God. Why God saying, if we desire to have a partner in the way as a wife or a child, we take it from ourselves, and then we find that the ourself is women. So he does have, or he does not, it doesn't matter. He just confirmed to us that our self is women and angels. Are you getting the point? So if you are trying to say to me, Allah has no partners, you did the opposite because you just said our self. By saying our self and making women and angels are our self, you made yourself equal to them. And in order to marry or to have sex with the female women, you have to be from the same kind. Because he's talking about having a child. So Allah, if he want, he will take a partner, not from the earth. He will take it from those who they are in heaven. That's what the verse saying. Who are the those in heaven? The Huris and the angels. Allah will have sex with an angel or the Huris. And then after having sex, they will have a baby. You are the son of Allah. So when a Muslim he says, okay, the conclusion of this verse that Allah have no partner, that's stupid. It's the opposite. Because he just made himself equal to human and to angels, and it's possible to have them as partners. You see, the possibility to call me a partner, that means we are equal. We cannot be partner unless we are equal. When you work in a company, you are an employee, you are not equal to the owner. But if you are a partner, you are equal, for you are an owner too. Any Muslim? Any smart Muslim want to give me a smarter comment? I like smart comment. I buy them actually. Anyone? Where is the Ustad? Ustad Mickey Mouse, Ustad Ibrahim, Ustad Yehya, Ustad Shish Kabab from Indonesia. All of them, they have no idea what to say. If I open your Skype for me, you will call me. But I, you know, my internet is not good enough. You saw I lost this connection. That's why I'm not taking calls. If I have Skype and this running, I will go, uh, I will go out of con contact. Hey, my friend, don't worry. In a few days, I will be back home, and you can call me as much as you wish. Correct, guys? You can call me, and we will have fun. Let us see how good you are. I will make you famous. Kabich? Yeah. Abdul Somad, you are here? I don't think this is a real one. I think this is just a name. We welcome all Muslims, especially those who claim to be teachers in Indonesia. I have a special interest for those who claim to be teachers. I believe none of them is real. All of them, they have no idea what Islam is about. They are just fake. They cannot even quote for me one verse from the Quran correctly. They don't even know how to say the name of their prophet correctly. I saw a Muslim sheikh from Indonesia. He was speaking supposedly Quran. Honest to God, I was dying laughing at his Arabic. So I challenged them all. 
all those who call themselves Ustad, they are making a living from being Ustad, but yet they are not. Ustad in Arabic mean teacher, master. Master of what? You, you know nothing about Islam. Nothing. They have zero knowledge of Islam. Those people, they are copy-paste people. They have no idea. They copy. The same as did that. The idiot, the same as Zach and Nayak. They know nothing. Copy, paste, copy, paste. This is why when they face someone like me, they go out of battery. Their, char their charger is not working. So do we have any, you know, I will I will be I will be back for sure maybe by the 7 or the 8 uh, uh, of uh, September so just a few days from now and you can call me any of those who claim to be ustaz give me your give me your skype i will call you i will have the honor to call you your majesty maybe you are big you don't want to call christian prince christian prince will call you hmm? so tell your ustaz that Christian Prince is making fun of you, claiming that you are a bunch of cowards, fake, making money out of those poor Indonesian. You are not real. You do not know your religion. Prove it. Call a Christian Prince and destroy all his claims. Show everybody that this guy, he know nothing about Islam. What you will lose? What you will lose if you crush this guy? Do you know how many thousands left Islam because of my videos? If not tens of thousands, if not millions, what you can do about it? Do something about it. Call him once for time, like, you know, bring all those stad of Indonesia, make a conference together. Open your Skype together, sit next to each other, open your camera because you are handsome, I'm not, and destroy me. I mean, come on. Can't you do it? It's a challenge. It's a challenge for the big, it's a challenge for the small, for all of you are small. You, you're a prophet, your God know nothing. All your religion is a copy paste of somebody else. Some copy from the Christians, some copy from the Jews, some copy from the Sabian. And look, just to show you something stupid. Look at this. Guys, this is say here, read with me carefully. Also, also roaming the earth. At the time of Zoroastrian the, the fire worshipper and Sabi and star worshipper, guy, did he say the Sabians are stars worshippers or my eyes are misleading me? Did this guy in his article, this Muslims, admitted that the Sabians are stars worshippers? Does it say that? Look, 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 I will make it big for the blind one. Look, here we go. I make it so big to the point I became blind now. Okay. So as long in your Muslim website, islamfaith.com, you just admitted that Sabians are stars worshippers. So how the Quran say this? That Sabian will go to heaven. <laughs> how somebody is a star worshipper? <laughs> how somebody is a star worshipper? Huh? He will go to heaven, Abdul. Uh, this website is a stupid really unbelievable here we go in the ladina amen well ladina had one no sorrow was sorry in a man amen a bill he will you mill author well i'm a sorry hand for home is wrong and the robby him well a half on a lim well a home yeah the noon okay the translate assembly is translation look at this the sabians muhammad promised them to go to heaven brother so how the Sabians are stars worshippers and they will go to heaven? Hello? Do you see it? Brother, the Sabian are star worshippers as we showed you in the Muslim website, yet Allah promised them to go to heaven, brother. How you solve this problem, brother? Easy. 
Muhammad is a fake prophet. He was promising everybody. Don't worry, be happy. You are Sabian, you go to heaven. You are a Christian, you go to heaven. You are a zoo, go to heaven. Just say I'm prophet. Still worshiping the stars, brother. And the answer for that, very simple. Muhammad, in front of the Christian, he is a Christian. In front of the Jews, he's a Jew. In front of the Sabians, he's a Sabian. Like Obama. Obama, he made a speech in the, in Cairo, speaking to Muslim as if he's a Muslim. He went to the Jews. He, he wear the hat of the Jews, and he pray in the front of the temple as if he's a Jew. He go to the church. He hold the, he, he hold the Bible. He go to the atheist. He make fun of Christianity and religion. Hypocrites. Then he must have an answer. Sabi and they are going to go to heaven, but they are stars worshippers. So look at this. I mean, science is stupid. History is stupid. And even religious meaning is stupid. This is Quran. The hypocrite man is the same as a guy in the election day. He promised everybody they will go to heaven. He go to uh, to uh, 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 to Middle East. He promised them falafel. He go to America. He promised them steak, because this is what they like to eat. Uh, he go to uh, uh, to Iran uh, to Persia. He he promised them baba ganoush. The bent in the market, and this is Muhammad. He's marketing now. And later, because they did not believe in him, he said, okay, Christian and Jews, you will go to hell. Sabian, they will go to heaven. He will go Sabian, and now they are promised to go to heaven. But Sabians are people who worship stars. And it's from the same website trying to prove to us that Allah is God. You believe it? If there is any religion in the Quran, the Quran is a many religions. Quran is, as you see, Sabian, Christianity, you name it. He took the, the stone of the Hindu, the Shiva stone, the, 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 the private part of stone, the Hajj of the Hindus. The Kaaba actually is nothing but a Hindu practice. Most of the practice, you see the Muslim, if you go right now and look at the Hindu priest, how he dress, and look at the Muslims, how they dress, you will find exactly the same clothing. And the Hindu, they have a stone which represent the black. It's a black stone which represent the private part of the mirror and the female. And the Muslim, they have the same black stone. It's the same. The, the Hindus have to shave their head when they go to the temple. The Muslim, when they do Hajj, they have to do the same. Even the sandals of the Hindus have. To, it, it's made exactly because the sandals of the Hajj have to be made in a specific way. It's made exactly as the Hindu sandals. It's a Hindu religion. Add to it some from a Christianity, some from the Nasara, like Jehovah's Witnesses, some from the Jews, and some from here and some from there. And then we end with a book of fictions, Zul Qurnayn, the flying carpet of Suleiman, the ant is talking, the seven sleepers. I mean, all of those is stories, fictions. All right. So anyway, I want to say thank you guys for being here. We exceeded our time. And I have many things to do. Uh, and I appreciate having you all. Uh, I don't know if tomorrow I can do broadcast. If not, then you wait for me until I come back uh, to, uh, uh, to the state. Right now, I am abroad, as you know. And uh, soon we will go back to normal and we will have our normal computer and equipment to do what we do. However, uh, like I'm making videos in the other channels, I'm using my phone. And actually even here I did use the phone for some time. So maybe during the time, I'm, uh, because I'm moving from city to city, so there's no, uh, uh, no place really to, to know, I mean, how the internet will be. So if I go to different place and the internet is good, I will do live podcast using my tablet. If not, I will use my phone, record my screen as I did many times before, and I will post. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to our other channel, which is called The Quality of Life in 27. Uh, if you like to join us in different topic, which is about things to do in life, 
things you know just like uh, that that topic is to talk about things can be helpful for all of us to give advices for things that have nothing to do with religion here we do speak about religion about politics so there is different topic that give us a break from the dirt and the smoke of the barbecue so thank you very much for being here may the lord bless you and i want to say thank you for all those who support our mission may the lord bless you all and a special thanks for those who translate my videos into Indonesian and Indonesian people deserve our respect and our help and actually I'm going to make a special video for Indonesian people will have a very good news but that will be very soon because I have a gift for them especially for Indonesian people so soon I will make that video and they will hear Well, my internet is back, but I, I'm going to end anyway. So I want to say thank you guys for being here. I apologize really for this bad internet. And with this, we finish for today. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.